In this module, we look at the mechanism of how enzymes are able to lower the energy barrier, the activation energy barrier. So let's look at first of all how enzymes work. Enzymes have a specific site at which they bind the reactants. In this case, we are going to call the reactants substrate molecules. So enzymes bind the substrate at a specific site which is called the active site and that's where they catalyze the reaction. The active site is basically composed of the catalytic domain of that enzyme plus the binding site where the substrate will bind the enzyme. The binding of an enzyme to its substrate has certain requirements. First of all, the substrate has to fit the part of the enzyme that has the active site, sort of like lock and key. So there has to be structural compatibility. The enzyme should be able to accommodate substrate. Only those substrates will fit the enzyme that fit the enzyme will be able to interact with this enzyme. So enzymes are very, very selective. They have structural requirement. They have also chemical requirements. The chemistry in the groove or in the part of the catalytic domain of the enzyme has to be uh, complementary to the chemistry of the substrate. For example, there may be that domain, the catalytic domain may have ability to do hydrogen bonding, may have positively charged areas. So, um, so a substrate that has negative charge and has the ability to do hydrogen bonding and has the shape that can fit in the catalytic domain or, or the active site of the enzyme that is the only substrate that will that will be able to fit the enzyme and enzyme will be able to facilitate the chemical reaction so enzymes once the substrate has fit in the enzyme they have interacted the substrate and enzyme have bonded the enzyme will lower the activation energy barrier we can see in the graph without enzyme the blue hump is much higher if you use enzyme as a catalyst the energy activation energy requirement of the reaction lowers so the red hump is much shorter much smaller than the blue hump so enzymes have basically lowered the activation energy requirement however equilibrium is dependent upon the delta g the free energy enzymes cannot change the delta g or the equilibrium of a reaction they can change the activation energy this this by changing the activation energy they can speed up the rate of the reaction how do enzymes uh, lower the uh, lower the activation energy for example enzymes can orient the substrate molecules when we are making a peptide bond two amino acids have to be at right orientation the carboxy domain of one amino acid has to interact with the amino domain of another or adjacent amino acid so enzymes can hold substrate molecules in appropriate orientation and that's how they can that's one way they can lower the activation energy because as we know chemical reactions occur when two molecules collide so at random the probability that two amino acids will collide in right orientation is lower however when you have enzymes facilitating this process you can lower the energy requirement because as we know the, uh, the, the collision of two molecules is dependent, is an energy requiring process. Two molecules have to move and collide with each other. Other mechanism is enzyme, once they bind a substrate, they can change their shape. When they change their shape, they can bend their substrate, thereby weakening some of the bonds. So when enzymes bind their substrate and change their shape, they can stretch the bonds and now it is easier to break these bonds so basically the, the our substrate or our our reactants get to the transition state easier when the enzyme is present another method is by using acid based catalysis or in other words enzymes they can donate an electron or a proton and thereby causing their substrate to become unstable and more prone to a chemical reaction. So these are three different mechanisms. Enzymes adapt different strategies to facilitate a reaction or speed up a reaction. I mentioned the word conformational change, change in the shape of the enzyme. Conformational change is basically the, the change in 
the position of atoms within a molecule. Atoms in a molecule basically are again at an optimal uh, energy level. So basically, the in, an, in a protein molecule, the negatively charged entities or neg negatively charged domains will be as far away from the positively charged domains as possible. So when there is a conformational change, molecule to molecules interact, they exert force in, on each other. So because of this interaction, the, the position of atoms within a molecule change. So I mentioned uh, the, uh, the, I mentioned that the interaction of enzyme substrate is lock and key. In fact, it's not exactly lock and, fee, lock and key. There's also conformational change when the enzyme binds the substrate. As we saw, one of the strategies enzymes use is to bend the substrate or stretch the bonds of substrate. In a case where hexokinase, we can look at this enzyme as an example, when it binds glucose and ATP molecule, it closes up on these two molecules. It breaks up the phosphate and attaches the phosphate group to the glucose molecule. When it closes on these molecules, it excludes water, thereby it prevents the possibility that phosphate group might attach to a proton and become free and release the energy. So that phosphate group is now transferred to the glucose molecule rather than attaching just if the water was present, it will not do that. So this, these are the different mechanisms enzyme use to facilitate a, or speed up a reaction.